So um, I did a video, uh, my last video actually, funnily enough, was on Math Audio Microphone EQ. I thought this was really badass, really cool. So I bought it. Let's do it more in depth. Let's do it with my studio monitors instead of talking. Because talking was good, but um, I think I can get a lot better results by doing it with monitors. So let's just jump right straight into that. So the setup that I have for this is actually pretty stupid. I just have my monitor and I have one microphone pointed at it. And then I'm going to have the other microphone pointed at it. And I'm going to put the mic side by side, gain match, and uh, hope for the best. We will turn this one on, on, we'll pan them over, and we'll see how it goes. Alright, so this is the SEV7, and uh, theoretically, you know, if I turn on the NT1, and I talk into the NT1 instead, this is the Rode NT1, and this is the SEV7. This is the Rode NT1. This is the SCV7. They sound pretty fucking identical. And if we put them right next to each other, they even have phasing issues. So what I'm curious about is if I flip the phase on this one and I get these to be uh, about the same distance. Uh, okay. It's, it's definitely closer than the one that I did. 100%. If we look at the one that I had made before. So this is what it uh, currently looks like. One that I just did by doing the pink noise. And. This is the one that happened with my voice. You can see a big difference. You can see this is a lot more accurate, I think. So that's pretty cool. And that, this might actually end up being pretty much identical to the NT1 at this point. If you get, if you talk to the, you know, talk to the right distance. Uh, let's move on. So now let's go for a bit of a big one. This is a Behringer XM8500. It's probably one of the most common cheap microphones in the history of common cheap microphones it's like 20 bucks everybody has one i swear to god and now i'm gonna eq match it using this method to my nt1 and if i can get it to sound like the nt1 uh that's pretty crazy so let's try it out all right so this is the rode nt1 and i'm fairly close to it maybe about three inches and this is the XM8500, and I'm also the about the, that distance from it. Let's try doing that, uh, the, 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 the utility, and we'll see, do they know loud if I get them to the right distance? If I, yeah, okay, they're close. And now I have a, a Behringer XM8500 that sounds like a Rode NT1, sorta, kinda. We're gonna move on to the next stage of this, and we're gonna turn these EQs that we just made here into impulse responses. So that way anybody can use them. So here's the the way I got this going here. I have an impulse response that uh, is blank. It's just a pure impulse for an impulse response on this track, which has the math audio EQ, which is going to be the V7 for the to NT1 just for testing. And I'm just going to export that with that on there. And so when we do that, we'll do uh, pure impulse. And it'll be the start, and it'll be the render length, and we will do a high sample rate wave, and we'll export that, and we'll call it V7 to NT1. Okay, so we have the bug X up on this bitch, and you can see it's it's just called V7 to NT1, and uh, this is the Rode NT1 right here. And uh, I'm talking the same distance from it as it was the V7, V7, and this is the, the V7. And you can hear they are pretty solid. If I flip the phase on them and I get them pretty close together, then you can see that they are, uh, you know, if under the right circumstances. Under the right circumstances, they'll know loud. So there's that. You know, hey, we can do ASMR now if we really want to. Uh, I'm talking in the center and I have this and then I have this and now they're so they're so well matched that if you really wanted to you actually could do the ASMR which is pretty interesting that's a fun little thing I don't know uh, go download these they're in the description uh, yeah I did it for both of them there you go thanks for watching uh,